Vaporwave News Network, Episode 4. Welcome to Vaporwave News Network. I'm your host, Alex, and today I am here with George Clanton of 100% Electronica. So we're not going to mess around. We're going to get right to the point, and we're going to discuss the biggest news in the Vaporwave world, Electronicon 2023. So I've gathered questions through our anonymous form. I searched throughout the vapor sphere to make sure we cover the earnest questions people had about the festival, the lineup changes, and some accurate reporting about what's going on with this whole situation. So as many people know, the lineup changed, and that's going to be part of our discussion. But I'm hoping that the interview is going to give us all a chance to understand what's happened since the release of the Electronicon 2023 lineup and some insight into the challenges of producing a one-of-a-kind festival on par with the best that represents the future of electronic music and celebrates the history of our vaporwave movement. So welcome to the show, George. I gather it's been a hectic week for you, so I'm glad we were able to like work this out, slow down, address all these questions. And like I said, I'm gonna get in them quickly, but first, how have you been? I'm sure like stressed doesn't even begin to cover it, but how's it going? (laughs) Oh, well, you know, uh, I've been okay. I can't complain. I have a lot of, um, you know, things to be grateful for. Uh, But yeah, you know, obviously uh, it's been a hard time. I've had some more sleep and um, eat since the Hot Takes live stream. So I'm feeling... Uh, you know, physically a bit more recuperated. I just want to say I pr- I really appreciate, uh, I know that you've been working really hard, so I really appreciate you going through those, as you said, like um, millions of questions, I think yeah, it was. A zillion uh, and condensing questions. Them, and condensing them down. So, uh, you know, I know that you've been working at this for the past few days, so I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's important for someone to kind of do the like serious media work in our scene and kind of talk about what's happening. And that's what I've been doing with the show. So before we get to the questions, let me like lay out a disclaimer for the audience and all these people and kind of explain the process. Because you mentioned there was like a zillion questions. And I'll say that there were over 140 responses. And there was a lot of overlapping questions, non-questions, hateful comments, and of course, plenty of good faith comments and questions as well. So some of those questions were covered on Hot Takes, which happened earlier in the week. You can go watch that on Twitch, or you can listen to the podcast version on your podcast platform of choice. And we're going to rehash a few of those things for clarity, but some of this is going to be new for some of our listeners out there. So George approached me to be a neutral ground, and my suggestion was that we do the anonymous uh, question submission form. And that's kind of just part of keeping things neutral here. Of course, some people used it as a chance to attack various folks, not just George, but I have combed through all those submissions. I grouped them into a bunch of different topics, and we're going to be doing our best to get through as many of those questions. Some of them we're going to address exactly word for word. Some of them are condensed to larger questions that a lot of people had. So I managed to get it down to 25 questions, and some are going to be quick. Some are going to take some more explanations, but we're going to like do our best to kind of keep it moving so we can hopefully do some bonus questions at the end. And very first thing, let's just establish what's happened here because it's been like a crazy week. And the first question I'm going to do is a bit of a clarification for people who are just tuning into the news about the lineup. What changes were made to the lineup for Electronicon 2023? I'm going to ask why later, but just state the simple change. You're saying what changes? Uh, Well, John Mouse was originally set to be on the lineup and he has been removed from the lineup uh in hopes that or is why the next question yeah so (laughs) the question is why because that's obviously what's been on everyone's mind so the the why would be theoretically because it had been suggested that john mouse's presence uh, would cause a sort of a hateful or a a proud boy. Basically, it would attract, and th- you know, this is this is the theory that John Mouse would attract um, a group of people who would just be there, um, basically to troll and to cause trouble, uh, or people who weren't there for the music, but 
Yeah, or people, I wouldn't say people who wouldn't be ac accepting, but people who would be there for the purpose of not accepting. People, you know, that was the, I think, the problem. Um, I don't think that it would be, I don't think that the, the fear was that people would come and then they would just be kind of like, hmm, I don't know about these uh, blue hairs. You know, I think it was, people were worried about, you know, people causing an, an actual problem uh, at Electronicon. And I didn't, you know, obviously I didn't think, I didn't think that that would be the case. Um, but one way or another, you know, it, how, how it started to happen is kind of irrelevant. Yeah. But um, it did start to happen where, you know, people were just talking about, I'm going to come to Electronicon for, I'm going to, I'm going to come to, I'm like people on the quote unquote, you know, left side of the argument were saying, I'm going to come to Electron, I'm going to punch a Nazi, you know, I don't care. I'm going to punch a Nazi if I have to. And people on the right side of the argument were saying a lot of, you know, um, slurs and stuff to these people. And to a large extent, you know, I'd like to believe that it was a lot of empty trolling. Um, but it's just not something that you really are in a position to, as someone who's supposed to be representing um, the record label, the event, and perhaps most importantly, a whole bunch of innocent artists who didn't ask for any of this, um, you know, to make sure that that doesn't happen, that that trouble doesn't happen at the event. I yeah. mean, it's really important that we, I mean, we don't want trouble at any of the events, and I feel like it's never happened, and, you know, I feel like wouldn't happen or shouldn't happen, but I guess, you know, in an, a, trying to be as safe as possible. Yeah, especially when, whatever. especially when at the announcement, a lot of people were sort of unsure where John Mouse stood and there was a lot of outcry from people within the community. So there's a whole bunch of questions that asked basically this, like, did you know going into this that he was at January 6th? And you discussed this on Hot Takes, but let's like recap it for clarity because people are kind of asking about what was the vetting process and did you meet him in person or directly before booking? Why was he necessary to be on the lineup? How did he end up as a headliner? All those kind of things I think just wrap into that because a lot of people were asking, did you know he was at January 6th? Okay. Yes, I did know that he was at January 6th. Um, you know, I think that... And, and I feel like this is probably something that's that's telling um, of my personality, like to a lot of people that they, you know, they don't like it. That I would know that and then think that it would be OK to have that artist um, at the show. But, you know, it wasn't really. I'm not sitting here trying to you know, pick and, and select artists based off of what, you know, what they do. And, you know, insofar as as long as they're not hurting people. And I think that what it comes down to is was being present, um, you know, at January 6th as a as a sort of a passive observer. Is that, you know, endangering people? And I think that that has been um, an interesting, but um, a lot of people have discussed you know, it, but I very think it, heated. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people discussed it, but I think part of the process of booking a headliner is something I think people are just kind of curious about in general. I know you explained a bit how you guys went from trying to figure out a headliner spot to discussing John Mouse to booking him. And I think maybe explaining that process a little bit will kind of clear things up for people. Cause like, clearly okay. you didn't book John Mouse with any malicious terms. And honestly, it had, there not been so many issues with him being unclear when the lineup dropped, maybe this all wouldn't have happened. So I think well, the process is kind of interesting to get into because you did explain a little bit of an uh, hot takes about who helps book this, 
how you ended up finding out about John Mouse as someone that was a possibility to book? Mm -hmm. Well, you, you start off by presuming that anyone is a possibility to book, and then you start asking questions. But, you know, I think that the people who would ask that kind of question just don't really know who John Mouse is. I mean, they don't have maybe a, a breadth of, of, you know, knowledge of music outside of Vaporwave. Yeah, they don't and, realize how important he is. I'm more just uh, like, because on Hot Takes, you talked about how you, I think your booking agent, Negi Jemmy, got together to discuss the lineup. And that's kind of how you guys put together all the electron cons is okay, there's so, like a, yeah. Well, that's how it happens. You know, we, we were to, I guess, to just say the same thing to, to give a background to the people who haven't listened to that podcast, because we, we can presume that many haven't. So just to sort of rehash that, yeah, that was the the idea. We were sitting around. There were several, um, you know, we we struggled to decide, you know, is this something that we want to sort of continue to just make for the Vaporwave community only? Or does it better serve the Vaporwave community too, as I have done, you know, with my career is to to reach out to a broader audience and of people who would be interested in this, but aren't interested in looking into or being a part of an such an insular, like closed off community, um, which sometimes I think does a disservice to a lot of the the yeah. great art that can be found within mm -hmm. if one is to dig. So. Uh, you know, we started by saying, as we do every year, wouldn't it be amazing to get X, Y, and Z iconic vaporwave artists who haven't yet played Electronicon? Because, you know, there's our, there are people who have played Electronicon. We don't have the an interest in, in doing the same thing every year. But there are some that we have had an interest in since before the first one. So... Let's try them again. Have things change? It's been many, many years. Let's just yeah. keep seeing if someone changes their mind. And, you know, so we started, that's how we started with our biggest headliners. And then if they're not interested due to not wanting to perform, I, I, I'm not sure if you heard my burp there. If you did, <laughs> I hope that we can you yeah. edit that out or, right. uh, no, uh, uh, basically, I don't, I mean, John Mouse wasn't the first, but he certainly popped up, you know, before too long. And, I, you know, in my world and in my wife's world, Negi Jimmy, and in all of our friends' worlds, and maybe it's because we're in our mid-30s um, or, you know, this is kind of how we got into Vaporwave was through sort of the, you know, the John Mouse pipeline. And... uh you know, before it existed. Yeah, the hypnagogic pop to vaporwave. So it just seemed obvious uh, to us that he would be on the list. I feel like obviously Ariel Pink wouldn't be on the list to talk about his yeah oh. best little buddy because Ariel Pink is such a, you know, I feel like the diff there's a big difference between Ariel Pink and, and John Mouse insofar as Ariel Pink has used being at January 6th as a jumping off point to trolling the entire yeah. indie music sphere totally. and going on Fox News and basically saying, you know, you know, a lot of things that yeah. people don't like, in my opinion, just for the hell of doing it. Because, but, you know, I can't say with 100% confidence what his thinking process is, but I, you know, I think he's been a troll since day one. It just seems like he just really likes being persona non grata on purpose um but john seems like he is really uncomfortable with that and seemingly very uncomfortable with uh ariel speaking for him yeah. and you know i just felt like uh you know before all of this before this was announced i could find no mention of the quote unquote um you know, alt-right or these, these trolls, um, 
you know, whether they're 12 year olds or whether they're actually real dangerous people. Um, you know, these people online who are being hateful, I, I, I didn't see any sort of like John Mouse uh, cheer them cheering him on, you know, like they have Ariel Pink for being such a large mouthpiece for their side. Mm. John Mouse, I would, you know, it's like he was there with Ariel. Why won't you know? Why won't he say anything? You know, I feel like it's is it, it, and and thinking that he's like a kind of a loser for not, um, you know, saying anything. And Another beta cuck. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so he's just sort of like. I don't know yeah. if we could uh, make jokes like that or not, but yeah, you know, that's the vibe, you know? <laughs> so like that was what, and I think that that's sort of like, uh, what we, um, you know, the, as leftists want is we want him to be a beta cuck, one of us. Right. So, you know, and that's what we believed. Um, and you know, to a certain extent still, still do believe, um, in many ways, you know, he might be being wrongly, um, wrongly accused, but, you know, we don't really, because he won't say anything. I, th I think that the, the most sus part about it is that he won't really say much of anything beyond like yeah. really small little statements. Like, um, uh, he did send us a statement to release on his behalf, but you know, I didn't. I wanted. I want him. Right. Yeah. You want it's not that him I want to say or it. Don't want him to do it. It just. It's just not the same. Me passing yeah. along his statement. Totally. Um. As we're, as we're essentially shutting it down. Um, yeah. I so, did find it interesting. So they did end up releasing a statement through Pitchfork. So quote: Mao shares a comment through Pitchfork through a press representative. But uh, we'll get to that because that does relate to some other questions people had. And I think maybe we'll clear stuff up for some people who were really reactionary towards the news. Speaking of reactions, was this the kind of reaction that you guys thought was going to happen? I mean, how do you feel about the audience or I guess uh, the vaporwave community specifically his reaction to the John mouse thing? No, this isn't what we anticipated. Um, obviously this is my worst nightmare. This yeah. has been a, a terrible, terrible experience. Um, I feel like the quote unquote vaporwave scene feels as though I've betrayed them. And then also now the, uh, John mouse fan base or, you know, a certain subsect of the larger general troll universe indie music scene oh, and yeah, then too. well yeah i mean yeah. certainly the, the trolls troll of universe, course have come out <laughs> but you have to wonder like do they even care so i yeah. don't even include them <laughs> but you know because a troll doesn't care a troll just like, they only care about trolling and i'm getting a fair deal of that obviously <laughs> quite quite a lot of it most of it i would say but oh, yeah there's also like a subsect of people who felt like me who who look at john mouse as a sort of um a kind of a person where it's like if he didn't exist i wouldn't exist type kind super of artist. influential yeah yeah and thinking that maybe you know like considering his leftist sort of past uh that he has been you know they're they're upset with me for being um phony or whatever they want yeah, to call yeah. me you know like and and so i've sort of lost a lot of respect on both ends and honestly mm -hmm. like yeah i just thought that i was you know i was just trying to make a music festival that would be uh have great music um and that would be something that we could all uh enjoy you know this isn't meant to be a electronicon has you know has never meant to be a, a political statement yeah um you know it's not a it's not a, it's not a, uh, I don't know, a fucking convention, you know, of, of politics. It's just a it's gathering a celebration of, of music, doing, of music. So yeah. just some, you know, people could say that, you know, I have a lot of privilege in being able to think, well, this is just about music, but you know, other people live in a world where, you know, politics are 
you know, on, on the forefront of their mind and all that they think about in every situation that they're experiencing, whether they're at the Starbucks or at their music festival or, or at a, uh, protest. But yeah. I mean, that's not to say that, you know, my sort of, um, private life is, is any different from that, but this is just something else entirely. I mean, I think of music as an escape and maybe that is a luxury, but, um, you know, basically I sort of just, it's, it's really quite simple. Uh, you know, I think I just misjudged how, yeah. uh, how strongly people would feel about this thing. But ultimately I think a lot of the strength of the, the response has been due to what I referred to, what I have referred to, uh, uh, and I'm going to regret saying this, but, you know, to a large extent, like a misunderstanding, a lot of people postulating about certain elements of John Mouse. And then two days later, walking it back and being like, oh, well, maybe he didn't do this just because it's a lot of people who don't know who he is want to, or I would say it's not hard to find them. I would say bad actors who want to basically get people upset and make this about something that it's not and draw a negative attention to the event or you know perhaps selfish means and and telling people the only reason that they would book john mouse is because he's a far-right extremist who was at january 6 he's best friends with ariel pink like you can just like as easy as it is to sort of make john mouse sound like a timid little creature who couldn't hurt a fly, you can restructure it and make it sound like he's the fucking devil. So, you know, I just, I don't know. I just didn't yeah. imagine that anyone would be able to um, go either way with it. I thought that John Mouse was pretty much kind of like, a, from a political standpoint, a pretty boring, uh, non-controversial entity. Yeah, because he's mostly talked about as being a pretty solitary person. He spent years alone up in Minnesota building synthesizers and studying getting a PhD, like all that. Talk. Yeah, he's not yeah. like a socialite. So a question someone asked was, were the performers aware were the performers aware of John Mouse being on the lineup prior to the announcement? Uh they had an opportunity to digest it, but if you, we want to if we want to sort of blame other artists um, for not speaking say, up. allowing yes yeah. not speaking up then I wouldn't say that that's fair uh, I would you know John Mouse got tied on pretty close to the end and the artists if they wanted to speak up um, as I'm sh I feel like the question is implying uh, then they would have had maybe 24 hours to read their email you know we, the, the first time they heard about it was seeing the poster and getting our schedule for how we're going to announce um because i don't know if anyone has picked up on this but uh you know kind of a we're kind of a little late yes on the announcement that's definitely it, it a question that's in there yeah a while to get everything together um i've been very busy this year and um you know, we still have two months. I mean, how long does it take to 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 get your shit together to go to a simple concert? But um, yeah, obviously, we would have preferred to have had more time. It's not like there wasn't hints that this was going to happen. People could have saved money. You you've been hinting for months for people who watch the big stream regularly. It's not a secret that there was something being planned a couple months ago. So sure. Yeah. Well, you know, we can assume it is that... tough when it comes out late, but yeah, like you said, we still got two months. There's still a lot of time for people to get their stuff together. Yes. So another question, and this is another direct quote was, was there pressure from you and your team for performers to keep quiet for the past couple of days? So that's referring to last weekend. Um, there was pressure. Um, and think... let me clarify a little bit here for listeners out there. If you don't know how the process works for booking a big, a big music festival, there are many different contracts and many different parties. So keep that in mind 
for listeners. So was there pressure from you or your team for performers to keep quiet the past couple of days? Yes, there was pressure on me, uh, certainly, to keep quiet. As for the other artists, there were, there were many artists who, or maybe not many, but a couple of artists and even, let's say, friends of artists who the artists were maybe um, embarrassed or they, they just, they like didn't want to bring it up to me that they were concerned about this, yeah. you know, uprising on Twitter and what we were going to do about it. Um, I would say I reached out um, to a few key artists and then there are, were other artists who are just as key uh, but that I didn't reach out to just because there's a whole lot of artists on the bill yeah. and it was a lot that I was dealing with more so in the immediate sort of planning and panicking and trying to read through everything that everyone was saying and, and make sense. I mean, it took quite a while oh, to, yeah. for us to wrap our heads around what was happening. Are these are these real people or are they trolls? And then, you know, are these people who are actually interested in Electronicon? And I came to the conclusion that yes, it was. Um, and then identifying, you know, where is this coming from? And then seeing slowly like the information come out that John Mel said January 6th, okay, yeah, we already knew that. But then adding on to that, he also, you know, because I, I guess I covered this pretty at length in the uh the live stream but like why being at january 6th you know in our minds wasn't like a big deal um you know i've seen a lot of people on twitter say he was at january 6th that's akin to you know like fascism just being there um whereas you know there's a lot more to it than that but i said you know john mouse has a phd in political science just watch an interview with him, like, he's just like sitting there, he, he, he can't like look the interviewer in the eye and he's like got his legs crossed and he's like shaking the whole time. Like he's, he has an, let's say he has an interesting mind, you know, like John Mouse, he's, he's interested in very strange things, you know? So I'm thinking, you know, this is like John Mouse's like Super Bowl and he went down there because of, you know, Ariel Pink and Alex Lee Moyer yeah. were working on this film that was at that time untitled and no one knew what it was. But pretty much immediately after January 6th, the information came out from Alex Lee Moyer. John Mouse never said anything, but she said, the director, she said, oh, well, John was just along for the ride, I think, for some freak tourism. Yeah. And uh, but then Ariel went around and said, we were there in peaceful protest of our of Trump. And John supports Trump 110%, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know, speaking for John, where he has never said anything. So I've met Ariel, and I've met John, and I guess just as I'm watching all of this unfold, I'm thinking, you know, this is a bunch of, this is a bunch of bullshit. You know, t Ariel is tweaking. I think he was tweaking when we, we had him on our podcast. And I think that he was, you know, before January 6th, of course. Yeah, wow, yeah, it's great <laughs> like, about that interview. You know, we had him on there, and, and you know, I felt like uh, he was spiraling out of control at that time for, for a different reason uh, relating to another um, Other scandal stuff. that he was yeah. involved in that, that has been overshadowed uh, due to the uh, January 6th um, presence. Yeah. But, you know, ultimately, John, they're just, they've been buddies since college. And it's just like a, I don't know, like an inseparable friendship. And that may or, you know, certainly is, is not helping John Mouse's career. But you could also make the, the argument that it, yeah. it put him on the map during, in the height of uh, Ariel Pink's fame. I'm getting off topic now as I do, yeah. but it's just <laughs> it's like, okay. I have a lot of thoughts about this and it's just kind of like, I'm still processing what it, happened It's real tough to and process, trying to yeah. make sense of it. You know, I feel like I, I feel really bad about certain things that 
were said and the way that my statement has been perceived. So I feel like I'm sort of walking back a little bit on, you know, like I didn't want to point the finger and say that John Mouse is definitely guilty of anything. And, and that's not the reason that he was removed from the lineup. John Mouse is removed from the lineup in the interest of making sure that this doesn't overshadow our event and that our event does not spiral into a political um, battleground. Yeah. Like that's, that is my worst nightmare. I have no interest in doing it. It's definitely not a publicity stunt. I think it's been bad for tickets in both ways. I think it is very, very bad. If I could do it all over again, I would not have booked John Mouse for this event. Not because, you know, I'm certain that he's guilty, but because it's just, this is a, a lot more attention that we've ever gotten before. And it's not in a good way. It's, it's, it's definitely, I would say, had a, it will have a measurable negative impact on my career forever. Um, yeah. and, uh, like, I'm going to be hearing about this for the rest of my life and <laughs> like, Ooh, yeah. you know, like I, I can just imagine like eight years from now, it's like, Oh yeah, George, George Clanton, isn't that that guy that did this? And like, whether they're, whether mm. it was put John mouse on or take John mouse off, <laughs> both are bad. Like there's just, it's a lose, lose. It was, it, it's been yeah. a lose, lose scenario where I, I can't articulate this enough. It's like. I just wanted to have sort of a, not a boring musical festival, but like, you know, a music festival that was just about the music yeah. and my privilege or my ability to sort of overlook uh, certain aspects of, 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 uh, artists personal life is, uh, you know, has been, has been brought into question and, and maybe that is something so I would say it's a good reason for an artist to not put their reputation on the line when booking a music festival. I think it's a yeah. reason why, you know, it's not fucking, you know, The weekend presents Coachella, you know, it's fucking faceless corporation presents Coachella. You know, nobody, there's always going to be yeah, you know, like, as you bigger it gets, the more problems there are, and you don't. Your whole reputation is on the line, and you have really so little to gain from it. We just wanted to have fun with our friends, and yeah, you know, yeah, it's, whole, it's not been a great thing. The whole artist curated festival thing. There's so many more inherent risks that come with doing something like that. Like you said, there's no faceless corporation to just blame everything on. There's no bean counters that you can blame. It's something you have to take a lot of responsibility for. So I think it's good that you mentioned there was a question that was covered that I forgot to put in this document, actually, which is, was this a publicity stunt? And clearly something like this could not be a publicity stunt. It's like absolutely silly for someone to ask that. But, you know, you also did denounce the actions because someone asked, do you denounce John Mouse and his actions? And then a question, I guess, would be, are transphobes welcome at Electronicon? Because a lot of people start asking about safety and we'll do a couple safety related questions here and try and keep moving on from the John mouse thing into a little more general electronic on questions and things of that nature. Okay. Well, uh, so is the official question is our trans folks welcome at electronic on. That so well, that's what someone asked. That's a right. Quote before we get, I understand before we get into that, I just wanted to, cause I feel like I've spent most of this sort of, explaining the other side of like, you know, I'm taking for granted that my statement is being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's a lot of like stuff that you just can't, you can't say in a 250 word statement. So yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot more to it than that. And I spent a long time shrinking that statement down from like 1500 words 250 words uh to, to get it out and you know like i'm sort of using the way that my brain is thinking right now as i've seen the backlash for removing him um by i think a lot of reasonable people and also a lot of 
very, very unreasonable people. I would say most of <laughs> yeah. them are trolls. Most of them are trolls. But a lot of the people on the other side are trolls, bots or, or, or whatever. Like there's a lot of people who have zero interest in this event who are using it to start mm -hmm. fight about something other than John Mouse or something other than John Mouse's music and sort of making extreme some of the things that he has done and hasn't properly denounced. Um, I think, you know, like going to January 6th in support of Donald Trump is not something that, you know, I'm down with. I don't think that that's cool. Um, but, you know, I just, it's just, there are other things that other artists have, you know, there are artists on that have been that have played Electronicon that have done, uh, you know, that have said, you know, forbidden words that they're not supposed to say. Done problematic and, things, blah blah blah. Yes, yeah, have yeah. done problematic things, and and you know, like I have. Where do you draw the line? And I think where you draw the line is like, is this going to is having this artist play? Um, an endorsement of their, of, you know, something that they've done in the past or every negative element of their character. And I say, you know, they, what they, what they represent is a lot more than, than just this to a, a lot of people, you know, do people like X or doing Y, you know, um, and or say do people like a for doing b and uh i don't think i have to decide if the answer is is no they like uh this person because of the music and they're going to be there for the music and it's not going to overshadow the event or you know cause any harm to anyone that's where i draw the line because i'm i'm not here to play uh, you know, judge and jury on, on, um, on everyone. And yeah. if people are, are looking to me to, to do that, um, then I am the wrong person, I, I think, to be, to be doing this event. But I do stand, I, you know, I have said some stuff at, saying, like, I like John Mouse, and people have really not appreciated that at all. And they're very offended about that. How can you say that you support in your statement right there, you say that you stand against fascism, but you are saying that you like John Mouse, how these two things are co completely mutually exclusive. And I think that that's just, um, you know, I don't think that that's very fair. I'm just trying to be honest with everyone. I'm not going to lie to anyone and say, I didn't, you know, I didn't know. And that he was at January 6th and yes, you're so right. He is a fascist. You know, because I don't know that he is. You know what I'm saying? I don't know that John Mouse is the straw man everybody wants him to be. Uh, he might be. And I, I've said that. He might be. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I don't know. And I could see that. I can see that he might not be. And uh, obviously I decided that it was more likely that he wasn't yeah. when I booked him. Um. Uh, what, and I say that, you know, I support these marginalized communities and we'll have a safe space at Electronicon. Well, I really mean that. It always has been and it always will be. I don't tolerate any of that, you know, at, at my shows or at Electronicon. But that doesn't mean, you know, like, you know, standing against fascism doesn't mean basically like, booting people off because they donated $1,500 to Trump. You know, like, I don't know. I can't say for sure. I can't say that that is the same thing as fascism, donating $1,500 to Donald Trump. It's not something that I would have done. It's not something that I want to defend. But putting an artist who is extremely val makes extremely valid art, uh, on a, on a concert of like-minded artists and, you know, like styled, I would say, 
not not minded obviously yeah <laughs> uh, as this is shown but you know like um you know similar in style artists and similar in taste audience um you know i don't think that it's you know that crazy yeah. but in, in in light of everything that this has caused, I mean, this has completely overshadowed the event. It's been an effing nightmare. There are people making awful threats to each other. And, you know, obviously there was no other way to go forward. Um, had I known that there would be these fights, right, you know, like, yeah. I wouldn't do it. But, I, you know, I think that there also could have, well, it doesn't matter. Let's yeah. answer the question. Are transphobes, can you read it back to me? Are so, transphobes welcome at Electronicon? It was simple. Are transphobes welcome at Electronicon? I would say, I mean, obviously, you know, the blanket answer is no. Obviously, I feel like that's kind of like a, a dick yeah, question. None of us want transphobes to be there. <laughs> none of us want transphobes to be there, but, but yeah. there are going to be all kinds of people at Electronicon. It's a public and event. And I think right and you know we can't control who's going to buy a ticket but i just think through the you know the nature of the event i'll tell you this if you're transphobic you're not going to you're going to have a pretty spooky time at electronicon yeah because there's going to be a lot of trans people there there's going to be a lot of queer people there uh you know of all shapes and sizes yeah. and um Everyone's going to be getting along. I'm sure that there have been transphobic people at Electronicon before, but you know, maybe they learn to be a little bit less transphobic by getting together and realizing that there's nothing to be afraid about. So I don't want to go into Electronicon being like, um, if you're a fucking transphobe, I'm going to fucking like, uh, going to punch you. I'll kill you or yeah. whatever, you know, like maybe. Uh, maybe that is what would happen, but you know, just the idea of making Electronicon about, you know, who who's going to be there and who who is welcome and who isn't welcome. I'd like to say that anyone who is who is there for the music and who will behave themselves and enjoy each other's company um, is welcome at Electronicon. And I know that that's not like the yeah. coolest answer, but maybe it's just kind of like. I just want people to cool down a little bit with this idea that there's, yeah. you know, like, I just don't think it's possible. There's not going to be a bunch of, you know, transphobes at Electronicon. We have enough, we have enough evidence now, you know, like speculating from people who have never been there and will never go to it, who don't give a shit about Electronicon, um, you know, like on Twitter, like their speculation is not more valid than having three events under our belts mm -hmm. that have been beautiful welcoming friendly totally you know events so one thing for people who uh, are worried about safety i had a question kind of like this a couple times and you actually did address it on hot takes because you were talking about the venue that's being held at the knockdown center so people said what measures will be in place to make sure it remains safe for attendees and free of disruption well, I think that the but I could look it up, but like the budget for security is in the tens of thousands of dollars. There, I have to pay, you know that that comes out of the ticket sales, I guess. So it's not like I'm paying it, but um, you know, before any of the artists, essentially, before I can before I can get any money that I promise the artists, the venue has to make their money back first, and a huge chunk of that is security. And there's a sh going to be a shit ton of security. So um, look no further than maybe some videos of people walking around at the last Electronicon and just see who's wearing those little matrix things in their ears. And there's going to be a lot of large people like that making sure that nothing uh, out of hand happens. Yeah, and the venue um, that, itself that, has policies that encourage safe space, too. And, and you I mentioned encourage that you to look at... Yeah. Yes, it's on their it's it's on their main web page there. And you know, I encourage I haven't actually done this, but I encourage people to go and look at, you know, who has played, who has uh performed other than Electronicon at the Knockdown Center. They they have a really great reputation. Um and um 
check it out. I mean, it's it's, it's the most legit uh, you know venue in New York City, which is uh, one of the better known cities of the world <laughs> uh, for f you know for music and and for for uh, human rights. Uh, you know, the liberal place. It's a diverse and place. I think yeah. It's in a very diverse place. The melt, the old melting pot. And, you know, like, uh, I think, um, I, I have a, I have an incredible amount of faith in this venue and, you know, that's why we, that's why we chose it. Yeah. It's a great place to have an event uh, like this. But even if it wasn't, you know, I don't, we, the security, they're making a shit ton of money for doing nothing <laughs> because there, there's, there hasn't been a lot of trouble. Just like, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many times at George, George Clanton shows, I know that this is different, but it, it also happens at Electronicon. The reason they, they actually knocked down center, we had a few other options, but knocked down center really, really made it hard for us to say no to them. They really wanted to have us back um, this year because... They were just like, that was such an amazing event. Everyone was so well behaved and everyone had a good time. There were no problems the whole time. All of the artists were on point and all the fans were on point. Um, nice. That's so, awesome. you know, we're really, we feel like we have like a, a really good growing relationship here. Yeah. It certainly has been strained a little bit um, through the, you know, this, this unwanted um, scandal. Um, yeah. But I'm, you know, we have two months until Electronicon. That's a lot of time to sort of heal and redirect our focus into, you know, the artists who are more deserving of our attention. Um, I would say than 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 John Mouse or, um, you know, the the drama <laughs> that his inclusion brings to this event. Yeah. So what's the situation with refunds? I had a bunch of questions, a whole good chunk that was people asking for refunds. Okay. Refunds are, um, uh, there's not like a uh, press this button and get a refund element, but refunds can be handled manually. I would contact, uh, you know, I, I don't have a specific email, but go to the Knockdown Center's website and use their email contact form. I've been assured by the talent buyer that uh, refunds are available. They didn't want a bunch, obviously, for obvious reasons. They didn't want a lot of um, sort of reactionary, quick thinking yeah. of people just getting spite refunds uh, before, you know, this all of this has has time to cool off and people can mm. recon you know really think clearly about what's going on uh obviously they don't want people to refund so they haven't given us a uh sort of a direct way but he says um you know i promise refunds are available if they contact the knockdown center cool so do that and um you know hopefully they won't be upset that i am during <laughs> this information i'm sure they won't listen to this podcast yeah. they'll be too busy so i had a bunch of people who asked what kind of contributions and they're implying financial have been made to queer and people of color in regards to the situation and for me i would like to clarify and mention the pitchfork statement again because the second half of it which i don't think i said is mouse indicated that he's donating some of his cancellation fee to the Trevor Project, which helps queer youth, and Hope Not Hate, which is an anti-racist group in the UK. So I think, I don't know how many people have followed this as closely as I have, but the mention of a cancellation fee was interesting. And those two organizations are things people can look up, but could you mention the cancellation fee and kind of maybe how that works when you drop an artist from a festival? Yes, well, that is actually still in debate. Um, that is something that is ongoing. It is a large part of sort of, you know, I was thinking for the people who didn't want John Mouse on, doing a cancellation fee is definitely something that is not in their, their interest. Uh, that would be the whole point. 
Um, we're trying, you know, obviously, uh, we want money that was set aside for John Mouse, as much of it as possible, back. Um, but there are, like I said, contractual um, issues, and there's not a line in a contract that says people, you know, demanding his removal on Twitter is, is grounds for a legal sort of removal. Yeah. And I think that John Mouse's management makes the argument that this has brought a lot of unnecessary stain to John Mouse's reputation and further makes him even more unbookable. Um, and we owe them something for that. Uh, I don't know if I'm really at liberty to talk about this at, at, at length right now. It's true. It hasn't yeah. done us any favors. Um, and, and for people who are listening, that is a comment that I mentioned earlier that Mouse's press representative shared. So this isn't a statement from 100 percent or George. This is a statement that the Mouse Camp shared on Pitchfork. Right. So that was the first that I heard of it because yeah. the way that I see it, we spoke to John Mouse at length over those days, which is part of the delay and and having everything go out. And as part of the conversation, it's like John Mouse agreed that the best thing would be to leave the event. It was a mutual understanding that nobody wants this sort of violent rhetoric going on around their music or around their event. It's just not the type of it's not what anyone's looking for. And, you know, again, just to just to go full circle, I think that that's the difference. I think, you know, Ariel Pink, you can see that he gets off on that, you know, like he wants people to be to be violent about him. It, he sees it as a subversive sort of win, uh, whereas I think it just makes John really, really uncomfortable. And it's not it doesn't he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I'm speculating. I think, he, want, here, I think he, he wants to play shows. You know, it's not that he doesn't want to play shows. I think he wants so. to play shows and he wants people to to feel safe at them and he wants people to understand like he said what was the next line in that thing he says John he, he John said something really sweet yeah. about he, he said says really like, it seems like a really nice event and yes. you want me to quote something. it yeah, he said, to me. he said, I'm sorry that I made electronic on artists and fans feel unsafe. It seems like a very supportive and inclusive community, so I regret that I won't be performing this year. And, you know, I really, you could say that that's like a pressy statement, but like, that's just like, that's how he's been t speaking with us. We have some really like, it's kind of like sad to read his emails being like, you know, I'm really sorry. He's like, he's like, apologizing to us that all this is happening and it just it's sort yeah. of it's very confusing to be in the middle of it it's been very confusing I bet. and <laughs> uh but in the end it, it's just like well why won't you just say this stuff out in the open and it would make every it would make everyone feel a lot better and he hasn't yeah. so i can't i can only defend it you know so much because i have the same questions as everybody why won't if this is true, then why won't he just say that? Um, yeah, it's tricky when so, it's only buried in an article on Pitchfork that who knows if anyone will read at this point. To go back to the update, because that was part of an update to the article. It's not even wasn't even part of the original article. We don't know. I, I'm I'm hoping this is a this is a, like I said this is an ongoing um, thing that we're dealing with, and I'm hoping to get it down so we can have as much um, I would say money as possible to put towards a. Uh, a replacement but um you know that is uh because there isn't really the way that electronicon is booked is generally well for the first couple of years i knew that we had to like build a name for ourselves but then for electronicon 3 i set aside like an amount of money basically let's see how much like if this if we hit sellout i'll make the same amount of money that I would make for a headlining show in New York. So I set some money aside for myself on the third one. This one is meant to be the same. But, you know, like, it's not easy getting, you know, basically, a, a, an event like this, if we look at other 
similar events that have multiple stages at places this size for a ticket this price, typically it would be like maybe eight bands uh, in a day. And we're trying to do like 21 and, mm. or something like that. Like, so there's just a lot more mouths to feed. And so there's not a lot of uh, surplus. There's not really a lot of surplus money to go on. But I think if you wonder how, where is, is, you know, money getting distributed to queer um, and POC oh, artists, I'd say look, look no further than, look no further than the lineup of which maybe some of these uh, the people uh, don't know very much about. So we're, we're trying our, our, our best to highlight um, some of these artists because I haven't heard really anyone talk about um, many of the artists beyond, beyond John. So yeah. just like last night, we put Full Body 2 uh, on the stream and we have some, some others we're, we're trying to line up to get everybody um, to give us a little performance that we can share ahead of Electronicon so people know what they're, what they're going to get into and what they're going to see. But yeah, nice. I would say, you know, look no further than um, the lineup. So a lot of questions about the lineup also started bringing up RXK Nephew. And he has a lot of shocking lyrics, as a lot of critics widely note. There's a lot of interviews with him out there. I suggest a lot of people go watch the No Jumper interviews, because those are long-form, in-depth interviews with, uh, well, it's RX Nephew. The K is silent. But he has a thousand plus songs, so I'm sure you haven't heard all of them. But do you have anything to say about the people picking apart all the aspects of this artist and aspects of the lineup? Uh, well, aspects of this artist, I mean, yeah, you know, it's like horror core rap. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, uh, grotesque things that he's saying. Um, you know, if, if people are trying to start ba uh, John Mouse part two to try to get, jo uh, RXK nephew or RX, Island K, uh, nephew, uh, off of the lineup, um, I just, um, petition them to uh, think twice about it um, before you put RX Silent K Nephew on the radar of, you know, alt-right trolls who are just waiting, who are just watching and waiting for to see what else is going to piss someone off, and they're just going to cause some fake drama to make it, to spiral it out of control and, and ruin another person's life. But, you know, hardcore rap... I think, you know, there's different rules. It's not my position to sort of uh, police um, rap as an art form. I think that it has uh, obviously a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, different set of rules and, and different regulations. Different standards, yeah. Different and, perspectives. Um, I think, I think RxK Nephew, or I'm in the habit of saying RxK Nephew because I haven't watched the No Jumper <laughs> interview. But, That's how uh, I was too. <laughs> yeah, so let's call him Neff. Neff I think yeah. he does not, you know, it's not our job to, or it's never been my interest to sort of police who is, um, you know, what the, uh, an artistic expression at Electronicon in so much as this is an artist who is um, sort of doing something that is interesting and, and sort of inventing a new, like, new way of operating economically, flow. new flow. In, yeah, he's like pushing a lot of different like boundaries. He's he's definitely uh, gotten on the radar of a lot of music critics as as someone who's um, pushing boundaries. And I think that um, very at the very least is it's interesting to take a look at. But you know, I don't think we have um, reason to feel that he attracts an unsafe or an yeah. alt-right or proud boy uh, audience that is going to be attacking our our innocent festival goers who are just trying to have yeah. a good time insofar as was the argument against John Mouse. Yeah, so, and I'll also say for people who are listening who haven't done copious research like I have, there's a lot of people who say that there's a ton of trans people who are fans of RxNephew. And in his interviews, he says he's not homophobic. He says he's not 
pro beating women. The lyrics are not representative of his personal actions and his personal beliefs. So like I said earlier, I recommend people go watch some interviews, read a little bit about hip hop culture and expression through pers- different personalities in rap. You'll learn about Slitherman, I'm sure, which is definitely a big part of what I think trips people out about Neff. But I suggest people go read and learn a little bit about what's going on. Because an outside booking like this, I think, is really interesting and really productive for Electronicon in getting sort of the vaporwave thing out there to more people. Have people give it a second chance, maybe. Because I think one of the funny tweets I saw related to Nephew was uh, Nobels, which is a blog that covers a lot of hip-hop, web music, and stuff like that. They uh, posted a picture of the Electronicon flyer next to like uh, a Neff tweet or something. And it was something like, who the fuck are all these people, Neff? <laughs> so I think it's a g- interesting and a good I booking. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I first liked heard about that Neff. comment on Instagram. Yeah, and I first heard about uh, Neff from Ian Cohen, who is like the big emo writer at Pitchfork. So that'll tell you who all kind of is paying attention and into and keeping track of what's going on with Neff. So... Yeah, and insofar as the the beating women, like he says, I fuck with Adam, but I beat the shit out of Eve. But then I read, uh, you know, he's talking about the Bible all the time and how Auntie we used to tell him about the Bible. And then I was reading something that he was saying about Auntie, uh, teaching him about the Bible, and he was saying that's how I learned that everything was bullshit, and saying that like the Bible, it just treats it teaches you to hate women. Like they, the Bible wants you to hate women. Who wrote this thing? A pimp. So, yeah. you know, it's in his way, that's kind of a feminist statement. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting artist to check out. It's not for everybody. That's certainly true. Certainly if you had, if you need content warnings before stuff, he might not be the artist for you, but there's going to be multiple stages. Lots of people doing different stuff. Like that's the beauty of electronic coming. Yeah. There's always something else to see. I do want to ask a little bit about the lineup more of that but there's one more thing i do need to ask and uh it comes back to the 100 percent electronica staff so this question these two questions i guess are verbatim first one was what does adam have to say about mocking us for our concerns i assume us means the people who were whining you know publicly but that wasn't really specified and another one in this vein was were you, George, aware of Adam being dismissive of people's concerns initially? Um, yes. Uh, you know, like Adam is my best friend. I listen to everything he's saying. He very much wanted John Mouse to be there. And, you know, I think Adam's opinion is, um, you know, pretty clear. He is, uh, I, I don't speak. I mean, I don't speak for Adam, uh, and I won't speak for Adam, but, you know, he's of the, he's of the opinion that, um, a lot of this is, uh, well, I don't speak for Adam. So, you know, we wouldn't have, again, you know, we wouldn't have, um, booked John Mouse if we didn't think that he was going to be a good addition and that it wasn't going to disrupt the festival. Obviously, this is a nightmare for us. But, you know, with that happening, I think that there's a couple of, of different perspectives that people have, have taken with this. And it's that, you know, one, John Mouse had a Proud Boy audience. Uh, and they came out of the woodwork and said that they were going to come and, and fuck all this shit up. Or two, that... John Mouse did not have a Proud Boy audience and um, basically through people being upset and speculating about him being a fascist, it, you know, if he is or if he isn't, um, grabbed the attention of the wrong people and then it became a problem. Um, to me, I don't care how it happened or why it happened, but happened there are people making threats and fighting each other over this uh on twitter and reddit on instagram basically 
everywhere words are posted. And I, you know, I don't want anything to do with it. And I don't want Electronicon to have anything to do with it. Um, I think, I think, um, well, people are asking me, I think, I feel like people are asking me to speak for Adam, but I'm not going to speak for John Mouse and I'm not going to speak for Adam. Um, okay. Totally. So back to the festival itself, people are obviously asking, is there going to be any more artists added to the lineup? And I actually want to know, was there plans to add more artists before all the John Mouse stuff happened? There was not. There was not. So now I feel like, yeah, it's, we have an, e an incredibly difficult task ahead of us. To, <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. Because who's going to want to be that person? Because yeah. it's going to be criticized extensively, no matter who or what it is, from someone. And it's going to be brutal. Yeah. <laughs> so I, and, you know, we don't have, uh, I'd say, enough money left over to give someone sort of a, I would say a um, premium, a premium for dealing yeah. with the bullshit that they're bound to experience. Um, and, you know, it's just kind of like, I feel like it just all of this has really put us in a, in a bad position insofar as, well, you know, a lot of the people, one of the people that we wanted to get on is a very before John Mouse. It was a, to to be a position that an, I would say another artist uh, filled is you know a very very vocally uh, sort of queer icon, and now it's like well if we Oof, go to this yeah. person for this now it's going to look like some sort of a performative uh, yeah. apology and or like um, it's just going to belittle their presence because now it looks like they're giving they're being given like a participation trophy so there's this it's tough. that's just a, a tiny little example yeah. of how our hands have been tied uh in this a little bit but i would say regardless of what happens i think we already have i mean i'm just looking at it take away john mouse Take away two or three other artists, and we still have a dope the best lineup. Electronicon that we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we have the, and uh, you know, obviously that's subjective, but to a certain <laughs> extent, this is a pretty damn like stacked and incredible yes. Electronicon that's going to be very thrilling for a lot of people. Um, yeah, whether it was artists like me. within the genre or bringing in people like DOS, like that was so exciting. I think it's very exciting. Um, and, you know, DOS to sort of get um, New York, New York behind it, because DOS is so, <laughs> such, a, such a big uh, uh, New York fixture. Um, but yeah, and, you know, DOS, wow, DOS, is, DOS isn't a stretch. You know, DOS with the shoegaze and dance, the blending of like shoegaze and dance elements. Yeah. Um, and the crossover there, the crossover, I would say, maybe outside of Vaporwave, if these people don't know who DOS is. But I'll, I'll tell you, a lot of people in Vaporwave do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a lot of people in Vaporwave Twitter, you know, we don't want to we don't want to admit it, but something has drawn them in. And, and, and in many ways, they don't really know about any anything that's going on outside of Vaporwave Twitter. Yeah. Like our other types of music, happen. but yeah. these artists, they're not, they're not random. Like <laughs> this is music. This is music that we like music that we enjoy listening to. And I think if you enjoy the artists on 100% electronica and you're going to, um, you know, enjoy all of these artists that you haven't heard of yet. True. Um, yeah. I'll say for myself, I, Definitely fucked up last year. I was like, oh, who are these Frost Children's? What is this? Blah, blah, blah. There's so many other things I want to see. Walked by their set for like a second. Speedrun, man, that album bangs. 
I've been listening to Speed Run so much lately, and now I'm like, oh, I wish Frost Children was on this lineup because it'd be so dope to see them, especially because they're so representative of the city right now, and that's always an exciting vibe. So I do have a question. What would be like some dream picks for artists alive or dead? Doesn't have to be someone that is possible, but just like any dream artist that would be cool to book on econ alive or dead. Well, um, you know, if I had to say, uh, alive, I feel like a lot of those, there's a lot of dream artists who I'm an active sort of actively trying to get them, um, mm -hmm. To be a part of it um i don't want to i don't want to dox i don't want to dox anyone and and put the pressure on them but i will say if you have an artist that you want to see on electronic on i think it's best for 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 their fans to sort of mm -hmm. put electronic on on their map and let them know that it's not just something stupid that this guy george clanton who maybe they don't like um is it's bugging them because um, I'm going to be in charge of it. So, you know, if, if somebody doesn't like me, that's pretty much <laughs> yeah. up my chances of, of, of getting them. Um, but, you know, we just, uh, you know, you don't have to like my music to, uh, to be a part of the event. It's so much more than that. True, um, true. But, you know, alive or dead, I think, I think that Electronicon really... Um, Electronicon really is a modern thing. The artists who are dead, um, you know, like I would say artists from the past, there's, there's stuff that sort of already uh, touches that niche. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I'm put in a difficult position to answer that question. <laughs> I, I, I could say more generally, like... Um, well, I have some names want... that people suggested that maybe you'd be interested in nick hexham yes. one no tricks right. point never nick those are two of the most popular yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> nick hexham was already electronic on and let me tell you one no tricks point never could fill up the the knockdown center two times over so <laughs> getting getting one no tricks point never is 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 um very difficult very difficult indeed the guys want a grammy i mean <laughs> but hey, I think we've got some pretty, you know, we had a surprise appearance from Nick Hexum at Electronicon 2. Yeah. Um, he said that that was as close to people that he's performed to since he was like in his 20s or something. So Hell yeah. people could reach up and touch his toes. So if you don't know about that, look up uh, Nick Hexum at Electronicon yeah. and see what I'm talking about. Awesome. Someone asked, what's the reason for taking out more classic Vaporwave creators? i.e. Cat System Corp, Golden Living Room, Desert Sands. You kind of address this on hot takes where you can't have the same people playing every year. So Well they're not taken out. You know, they're there not, we go. Yeah, exactly. They were well they they were put in. So Desert Sand played for the first time last year. So I you know I don't know that it's that it's taken out and Cat System Corp uh played just the second one. Um what was the other name? Golden Living Room was mentioned. Telepath was mentioned. Right. So, well, I think the question telepath. was more generally like, what? Why aren't certain past classic performers booked again? Which, yeah, I agree. It's kind of a silly question, but some people they need that base level response. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, I, I I hope that you don't I hope that you don't edit this thing in your favor. You know, like, wow, they're going to hate you for saying that. But no, I I think um, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be back. There are some there's some classic vaporwave like James Ferraro that we wanted to fit in. I would say that the only guarantee of being a part of you know the things that we're the people that we're keeping on, you, and you see you see the same artists on each time. Being 100% electronic con, we tend to cater towards our base uh, little collective in 100% electronic ca. So you get some of those vaporwave acts like uh, FM Skyline and Equip and and, mm. and DDS, etc. Um, but uh, you know beyond that, it's a rotating cast of characters. I think um, there were some that played so many times, like they played all three. But 
and I, I think we did ourselves a disservice by s establishing people to expect that mm, electronic yeah. home would just keep growing and growing and growing, but we don't want to in, in number. This is, this is as many people as we can fit into the event. It's absolutely insane. Um, I'd like to do a larger, even more insane event, but we would have to be like an outdoor all night, all day type camping festival, yeah. which isn't off the table at all. Uh, it's definitely, I would say, one of the, the long term goals if we have the, um, you know, patience and and infrastructure to continue to do electronic on, because I will say I'm not sure that this is. Um, you know, sustainable as is, but I felt that way last year. <laughs> and, um, as I said, electronic on three was like the best day of the year. So if that happens again for electronic on four, I, I guess we'll just keep doing it until we stop having fun. But, um, yeah, I would love yeah. to do like outside and have more people, but you know, just because they're not on this year's electronic on doesn't mean that they won't be on next year's electronic con or anything like that yeah. i think you know if you remember correctly telepath was supposed to be on electronic con 3 and then just decided to bow out at the last minute so not everybody is into it or plays can, live or can articulate why they do or don't want to to perform yeah i think a lot of people labor under the assumption that to because so many of the people who care about this event are like s small up and coming paperwave artists or they're participating in the creation of of the art form and you know they would say wow that would be a really great place for my music to be showcased and i would really like to have a position to to showcase my music uh and expand my audience through performance and through live performance but there are a lot of people uh, as this scandal has brought out a lot of uh, alternative opinions about, um, you know, Paperwave should not be performed live. Um, and if people could remember, you know, beyond 2018, <laughs> that's, not, that's not really a new idea. You know, that was the status quo, that Vaporwave should never be performed live. Um, but, you know, some people want to experience it in a live setting, you know, or just at least be in the same room with people sort of almost worshiping in the sacred space of the yeah. of the live music uh, event. Um, it's not about in some people, it, it, it's about anonymity and people have found ways to not sacrifice their anonymity and and be a part of the live scene. So I don't think that it can be dismissed as much as just saying that it's all about vanity for these people. Um, I don't think it is. I think people want to commune with their yeah. audience. It makes it real. You, something you dedicate your entire life to, I can certainly relate to that because I do a lot of it. I can relate to the desire to want to connect with the people who are listening to your music because to just connect with people online so often is a sad and it can be uh, isolating and 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 torturous to just i'm going essentially i I'm, I'm going to feel bad um every day uh about the people who are attacking me until i take the stage at electronicon and and people cheer so you know like being in that environment where you people can say, you know, hey, I, I, I appreciate your music enough to be here and observe it uh, is a really, it's a really special thing. And maybe, maybe not everyone needs it, but you don't really know how it feels until, until you have it. And then it's kind of like, yeah, it's a very powerful thing. But not everybody wants to play live. So, you know, we can't, uh, we can't make them. And I respect that. If you don't want to play live, you don't want to play live. I want to see you live, but that and your fans want to see you live, but that doesn't mean that you want yeah. to play. And honestly, like, I'm not here to use my platform to to guilt anyone into agreeing. But that doesn't mean that we can't sick the Twitter mob on them to guilt them into <laughs> wanting to play live. So a couple I questions the about mob for good. 
<laughs> yeah. So a couple of questions about location. A lot of people like to ask about location and cities and stuff. I'm going to do these two here together. Will you come back to LA or branch out to more cities like before? And then someone else asked, will you bring econ to Europe or Spain again next year? And they appended it with TYSM exclamation mark. Thank you so much. Okay. So, uh, and so far as LA, I mean, we're doing stuff. I feel like we're doing stuff in LA all the time. We just had a free party to release my song. It was Esprit, Maggie, Jimmy, George, yeah, we, hung out. we just, we just performed for free. And, um, you know, like maybe that was, uh, a couple months ago now, but like, to me, that doesn't seem like that long. Cause I also, in the meantime, I've been completely around the world. Um, but if you look at, you know, 100% electronica performance history among the artists, Los Angeles is the one that gets hit the most in so far as that's why I, well, that's why I feel like, well, there's two reasons, uh, why we go to New York. One is because we can do smaller events in LA sort of year round. And two is because New York was a better, we tried it on year one. We did, yeah. it's called an AB split test. <laughs> we didn't know if we wanted to be hosted in LA or New York because we have roots in New York, but we have a home base in LA. It'd be a lot easier to do Electronicon in LA, but the audience in New York is more excited. Um, larger numbers certainly easier for people traveling from outside of the country too there's a lot more people in that um vicinity as well yeah, like yeah. to drive it's mm -hmm. is a lot of people a large chunk of the country is within you know four or five hours of that area um to drive in so you don't have to fly and s spend a bunch of money um so more people came in new york and also it's a more and God bless LA, but, you know, just the sampling of, you know, it's a more diverse audience in New York and, and that just can't be denied just from at first glance. Yeah. So we just really liked the way, the vibe in New York. Um, the vibe in LA was great. The vibe in LA was great, but the vibe in New York was something I'd say worth traveling for. So we decided Electronicon is a New York event. We're going to continue to have it in the New York area. That is until maybe it gets to the point where we can do a camp out. <laughs> and in that case, we'll have to relocate. But um, what about the Europe stuff? Because that was one of the questions, too. Yeah, I regretted calling the Primavera event Electronicon. Mm. Uh, okay. There, because I like to control more aspects of. A, where it's happening, B, you know, like how the security behaves, how just everything. Like, I want to be in more yeah. control of what's going on. And we really had no control. We, we had very little communication. So putting the, what I think, I mean, up until last <laughs> yeah, week yeah, yeah. <laughs> was a very respectable name, a prestigious uh, event name or it meant something to people or it meant that it was going to be a good very well organized event um i don't want to i didn't want to i want to license it out basically i just don't want to you know it doesn't mean that we're not going to go back with the exact same lineup and as many people as we can uh, i would love to do that so yeah you know like if you want to see more artists from electronic 100 percent electronica in europe i would say when it happens because it invariably will happen when it does happen make sure that you come and make sure you bring as many people as possible because a lot of this stuff it's not up to us as much as it is the talent buyers on the other end mm -hmm. and that's sort of the, the the truth of the matter if you want it to happen make sure that um, we don't pass through your town to an empty room because then we'll never be invited back. Um, yeah. Will there be vegan food options at the festival? And this person appended their comment with a heart emoji. There will be vegan food. There will be, as there was last year, there will be more of it. Um, last year, there were only two taco trucks, or not taco trucks. I could just call everything a taco truck. There were two trucks, okay. two food trucks. Um I said that there should be three. They said two will be plenty. 
uh, obviously we needed four. Yeah. So <laughs> this year we're targeting four trucks. We want to have gluten free, and of course we want to have vegan. I mean, they know their yeah. audience. Yeah. Um, and um, cool. I think that that's going to be one of the major uh, enhancements. Awesome. Can you tell us a little bit more about how day one versus day two will work? Because they're not going to be like exactly the same with the same stage layout and stuff from what you've indicated. No, they won't be. Are, and none of the same artists. So there will be no overlap. We have not announced day one uh, lineup or day. We haven't announced the split yet because at this time there are only two day tickets available. Uh, we will when there are when it's time to split the days up. We'll make our final uh, call on who's on what stage and, uh, you know, who gets added to the show and who's been taken away can very much influence that. Uh, so it's we still need to, like, make 100% sure on how it's going to go. But the general plan is day one, um, we only have the outdoor space. So day one is just kind of like an, an after work type uh, into the night show outdoors it's a pre-party more or less it's just kind of like getting people riled up and we're going to have five or six artists play outdoors um at night cool uh so summer barbecue by vibes. the very nature of that it's going to be about half capacity so those tickets will probably we're not 100 percent sure but uh, i would say only the two day passes will be able to go to day one and those five or six artists will only be available to day one ticket buyers mm. at that point then we'll announce day two and then people will see oh you know like here's what the traditional like electronic con uh option is going to be for me yeah okay and it's going to be like the three stage thing again for day two yeah it's going to be so i think one of one of the other problems that we had with uh, electronic on three as it were was that the smallest stage was too small ah, the club um, stage and people really liked the club stage but i think it was fun to be in there and because of the insane energy and oh, heat yeah. <laughs> and to a certain degree the discomfort makes you excited um but there were a lot of people who weren't able to see some of the the artists that they were dying to see and we don't want to put an artificial you know we don't want to put that cap on on artists like luxury elite who yeah. is just Oof. you know you really you you don't want to miss that so um it's going to be more about indoors and outdoors this oh, okay, year okay cool and at a certain time outdoors has to be closed due to yeah. noise and at that time we will have um, uh, some shows, basically the outdoors is going to be replaced with the, with the, uh, the club stage. Mm, nice. But, it'll be cooler um, in there at night. <laughs> it'll be cooler. It'll be cooler in there at night. But also I think that's, um, and, and, and we'll target some of the more, um, obscure artists, um, just to make sure that no one is, um, missing their fave missing their absolute favorite yeah um and then maybe if those artists do really well uh they'll be on the bigger stage the next year like like equip and like like luxury elite but i mean we already knew that equip was going to do well it's just that i i actually did not see the club stage until the oh, day of the show Oh, okay that's so you know it's one thing like sort of having a map and having people say the capacity of a room yeah but then when you actually start catching the vibe you can you can sort of see ways to improve the event totally. yeah awesome well one more question unless we want to do some of the bonus fan questions but i i decided to pick this one because it's a bit relevant to me and i can share a bit of my experience and i'll speak a little bit for hot takes but why is George now using this opportunity to interact with the Vaporwave community outlets like Hot Takes and Vaporwave News Network when he typically doesn't engage with anything going on in the Vaporwave scene unless it's on his own platform? Okay. Well, uh, I think it's because I have my own platform. And as I'm trying to build my, my own platform, the most um, 
I'm doing big stream every week of the year that we have um, that I'm in town. And so, therefore, the big stream is something that takes more than the two hours that you're seeing us. Yeah. It's something that we that. <laughs> basically plan everything around. It's taken me hundreds of hours to build all of the interactivity. And not only that, but I'm also, it's, um, it's number one selling point. So, you know, like I'm the headliner of the big stream. So I want to make sure if I'm trying, if I'm putting hundreds of hours into something, I just want to make sure that people who are George Clant fanatics are coming in and seeing that. But, I, you know, we're using this thing that I've built to interface with the Vaporwave community an incredible amount on my own platform. You know, so what is it that, that I could say um, you know, that I'm not already doing on my own platform. Yeah. Beyond that, I think that this is the reason is because it's, it's important in this time to have a neutral territory where on my own stream, I can just ignore a, a, a question that I don't want to answer or, you know, people could even if I don't, people can always make that accusation or, um, you know, it's just, that's my home turf or whatever. And so it's just kind of like, well, this seems to a lot of the, uh, an, another element of it is a lot of the people who were, I would say, mistrusting of our intentions came from outside of the people who watch the big stream and stuff yeah. like that. I think a lot of those people, you know, there's over 200 hours of us talking. So if you think that I have bad intentions or that I'm a bad person or that I'm an edge lord or that Adam is a bad person or that Neggy Jimmy is a bad person, but no one would ever say that. But you know, like if you think that we're bad people with bad intentions, uh, who would just book someone to be edgy or to, to stage a fake uh, publicity stunt or that we are secret fascists trying to dismantle the system from the inside or the outside or whatever. Well, there's 200 hours of us just talking live, archived online for anyone to see, uh, you know, and our audience has already seen that. So, you know, I, I think that people who haven't seen that and who don't know us very well and just look at the way my face looks like an evil, like 90s, fucking super villain mm -hmm. you know it's really easy to just point the finger and say i've never heard of john mouse i think that it was i think that they must have just i did i've never heard of him and now i'm hearing for him for the first time because this person is telling me that he is a fascist and so i go he's a fascist oh my god well george clant must be a fascist you know like that's why i'm you know, it's very important for me to go on neutral ground, I'd say, outside yeah. of my home turf, because otherwise, the message isn't going to be heard. Yeah, and I think speaking for myself here, you've actually been pretty generous in messaging me back when I have questions. I mean, I try not to be demanding, but I've messaged you, and you've messaged me back when I've needed clarifications about vaporwave news and vaporwave history. So I do appreciate that. People are always able to seem. People always seem to be able to talk to you at shows. If people have watched the big stream, those two hundred hours, you'll see lots of small vaporwave creators promoted. Lots of people who've collaborated with one hundred percent electronica. Lots of demos, and you could send your demo in. Demo at one hundred percent electronica dot com. So, I this question I thought was a little bit disingenuous because even hot takes. Those guys have also talked to you. It was uh, both of them who played various after parties of econ so i asked this question because I, I know someone uh, would want me Dr. to Dr. christmas show yeah, yeah i know someone would want me to ask this but it mentioned me by name and i'll say that i don't know if i quite share this person's perspective but for vaporwave news network we have gotten responses from you so i do appreciate that and would definitely like to say thank you but that's from my perspective on this question oh, it's my it's my absolute pleasure um, and I'm grateful for you, uh, again, you know, for giving me a neutral territory to sort of answer these questions. I know that the, 
are we are we coming towards the end because i, yeah, I feel this is, like that know, was my last question of the 25 that i condensed from the public yeah okay so i feel like you know i just want to be clear because i guess in the way that the questions were formed you know and and mm -hmm. maybe and then also in the way that maybe the way that i feel about it because i feel very at this time, I don't. I haven't had enough time to sort of separate myself from feeling attacked uh, a little bit unduly. So I feel like a lot of my questions are, I mean, a lot of my answers have a tinge of that in it, and I just wanted to be absolutely clear um, with people. And you know, this is why. Yeah. You know the 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 statement is the way that it is. We obviously, you know, stand in opposition to fascism. I think I'm not someone who's willing. I think that the differences and the thing that people aren't going to like about what I'm saying is that I'm not as quick to um, use that word, uh, you know, fascism. Yeah. But, you know, like, I, I feel like it, we had to... S we had to say it. Um, I don't want to call John Mouse a fascist. If he is guilty of, of what people are saying that he is, then perhaps, perhaps he is. But that hasn't been, you know, made clear. You know, I think that... Um, so that's why I think I'm a little bit softer on the subject than... than people want me to be or need me to be, but I'm not soft on making sure that uh, my events are safe space. And if I was, Knockdown Center isn't. Elsewhere isn't. Catch One isn't. You know, all of these places host specifically queer events mm -hmm. and, are, and are chosen for, the, for yeah. those reasons. So... These people are are trained and and they know they know how to quote unquote police a party. I don't think that they're going to have to, but beyond that, I just you know I feel like I'm in a no win situation where you know I can't really I don't have the ammunition that I need to def to fully defend my stance on on booking John Mouse in the first place, but. I don't think that people have the ammunition that they need to be attacking me as a, what's being called a fascist apologist. I, you yeah. know, I don't think that there's any evidence of that either. So, you know, I just, I, I would like to invite everybody to just calm down and try to remember, you know, what this is about. Maybe it's a privileged position for me to say to calm down, but Let's not look to George Clanton, the idiot uh, music curator, to to get our political uh, knowledge and our political uh, to be our political leader. I never asked for that. Like, I just want to put on a show, and uh, you know, if I'm not the right person for that, then this will come to an end, and I'll be grateful for the time that I had to share the music that I enjoy with people. If um, you know, if not, then, you know, we'll continue to do it. And I'll try to be uh, more sensitive about that. I, 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 I can't imagine stumbling on another John Mouse. I mean, that really took us by surprise. But um, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe... I don't know how we could have uh, avoided this other than just not doing it entirely. Um, but... I feel like at this now point, I don't know what I'm saying. I just yeah, want to I think at this point we want to look forward and get excited for Electronicon because we've kind of come to some resolutions. Some things will never be good enough for certain people, but to let it be something that we continue to hang on to instead of supporting and getting excited about the artists who are still on the festival, who are going to put on amazing performances, is starting to feel like a waste of time and a waste of energy when there's so many other things we can all now look forward to and enjoy, hopefully together. There are literal, you know, people of color and queer musicians on the event that are being erased by this 
ongoing discourse. They're being ignored and, and made to as though they don't exist. So, you know, like, it's just, I mean, I don't want to make it about that. I, I, we, I mean, obviously we don't book or sign uh, people based off of that. There's no, like, and not that there's any, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's just not what we do. Yeah, you know, no quotas. I, I, right. There's no quotas. You know, we make the rules and the rules are there aren't any. We're just booking music that we like. And, you know, being part of sort of outsider music culture, there is an incredible amount of, of, of queer, you know, musicians there to, to spotlight. Uh, but, you know, some... Some this year, some last year, some in the future, some we don't know what their sexual orientation is because it doesn't, you know, really fucking matter. So, uh, but it's just, yeah, let's, yeah. I have, there's so many different people that are incredible musicians that no one's talking about. I guess it's just too, too much to ask at this first week that we get into that. But like, there's still a lot of time. Yeah. And as this winds down, I mean, wouldn't it be amazing if Pitchfork, I mean, can you imagine all the work that we put into this and the only time that we ever get mentioned I know, in right? the mainstream is when we're at our lowest point yeah. and, you know, everyone is either berating us or making fun of us. And, you know, ultimately we're trying to put this scene on the map. And I think we have put the scene on the map as... In a, in a way that is seen as is negative so we want to fight back and you know focus on the good things yeah show all the good things the vaporwave scene vaporwave community vaporwave art movement has to offer well george thank you so much for doing this interview i really appreciate it i hope this clarifies things for listeners out there if your question was not directly answered don't message me about it don't go on twitter and whine police oh god we've been through a lot here if you need to do some of your own research there's a lot of stuff out there to research a lot of interviews to read a lot of podcasts to listen to and watch i thank you for listening to this one and checking out vaporwave news network this is gonna be a special standalone episode as you've probably noticed if you made it to this point in the podcast we've been talking for quite a long time so i do really appreciate george for taking all this time to discuss it and i appreciate you the listeners for taking all this time to listen to it. I've been your host, Alex, AKA Trucks Passing Trucks. If you want to find me or my label on social media, you can look up Pacific Plaza Rec. That's Pacific Plaza R-E-C on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok. This podcast has cost me some money to host, so Pacific Plaza Records is the sponsor. If you would like to sponsor in your legit label, get in contact with me. I also have an Instagram page for my music and DJing shenanigans over at Trucks Passing Trucks. That's all one word. I'm playing some shows this summer. You can check that out on my Instagram. And I'd like to thank you so much for listening. And I hope you tune in to future episodes of the Vaporwave News Network. From our part of the vapor world, this is Alex signing off until next time. Vaporwave News Network. Summer never ends in Pacific Plaza.